Thon Maker was born February 25, 1997 in South Sudan, in the middle of a bloody civil war, and by the age of five, Maker and his family fled the country, spending a year in Uganda before being accepted as refugees in Australia. By the age of 14, Maker was discovered playing soccer by Edward Smith, a basketball talent scout and social worker who helps children from migrant backgrounds receive opportunities they otherwise wouldn't get. Smith had a reputation for helping migrants excel in their passions, as he previously helped other Sudanese immigrants reach their goals to be professional basketball players. Smith offered to feed, clothe, and educate Maker in Sydney, Australia while he played basketball for the St. George Basketball Association during 2011. As Maker's passions and dreams grew bigger, his height followed in the same trend, as he and Smith soon made an even bigger move relocating to the US. Once in the United States, Maker attended two schools in Louisiana before finally settling down at Carlisle School in Virginia. During his freshman and sophomore years playing for Carlisle's varsity team, Maker averaged 22.2 points, 13.1 rebounds, 1.9 assists, 1.4 steals, and 4.5 blocks over a total of 53 games. As a sophomore, he earned 2013-2014 Gatorade Virginia Boys Basketball Player of the Year honors after leading Carlisle to a state championship. Not a bad start for Maker in his first two years of playing basketball in the United States. After this impressive year for Thon, he decided to make another big move. In September of 2014, Maker and his brother enrolled at Athlete Institute in Ontario, Canada, where Edward Smith was already an assistant coach. During the 2014-2015 school year, Maker announced his decision to reclassify into the 2015 class, which would therefore make it his final year in high school, making him eligible to attend college during the 2015-2016 season. This was a big move, because Maker was confident in his ability to play among other top players which was highlighted in June of 2015, as Maker was named MVP at the National Basketball Players Association Top 100 camp. The hype surrounding him was at an all-time high, as college coaches wanted Maker to play at their school. Maker was measured at 7 feet tall and 218 pounds, with his scouting report labeling him very athletic, mobile, and skilled for his size and age. The insane mixtapes of Maker being a man amongst boys and putting others in their place was probably the reason for why Maker was an ESPN 5-star recruit, given a scouting grade of 97, something only achieved by 10 players in the last 5 years, with the only other player achieving a 98 being Marvin Bagley. Maker was heavily recruited and given offers from notable schools such as Arizona State, Florida State, Indiana, Kansas, Kentucky, Notre Dame, St. John's, UNLV, and others. With all of the hype surrounding where Maker would play for his college career, he made an interesting and controversial decision not to commit to any school. Why would such a highly anticipated player not go to the school of their choosing as soon as they could? Maybe Maker wanted to make the unorthodox step of playing overseas before declaring for the draft, something seen recently by other five-star recruits in RJ Hampton and LaMelo Ball. Maybe he thought college would be too easy, and thought he'd get better by playing against grown men, not other teenagers and young 20-year-olds. Maybe it would allow Maker to be even better for when he entered the NBA draft. But surprisingly, Maker didn't choose to play overseas or play at any of the Division I powerhouses that were scouting him. After all the eyes and controversy on Maker, and the decision this high school phenom had in front of him, Maker made the bold decision to remain in high school for another year to bully children and ruin their dreams just a little bit more. Okay, maybe this wasn't Maker's intentions, but it was an extremely questionable decision at the time. Now, I don't know the exact reason for Maker's decision to remain in high school, but I would assume that Maker trusted the guys at Athlete Institute, such as Edward Smith, to help him achieve his goals to the fullest extent. Maker's decision was shocking, so why did he do it? Maker graduated high school, but was still intending on going for another year. And this was because Maker believed in himself, that he was good enough to make the leap from high school to the NBA at the end of the year. Maker's plan would put him in a category to be just a second player in more than a decade to make the leap from high school in North America straight to the draft. It was a risk, a big risk, one that possibly ended his chances at being an all-time great before he really even got started. But Maker trusted himself. Was it the right choice though? In the lead up to the 2016 NBA draft, Maker was the mystery man. Even though he was a five-star recruit, 
heavily scouted, and always in the headlines, it was hard for NBA scouts to really get a good idea about his playing abilities and who he was since he was only ever playing against 16 and 17 year olds in high school. To add to the mystery, there was even controversy about his age, with some suggesting that he was older than he claimed. Even with all of the skepticism from scouts, 10 picks into the 2016 NBA draft, Maker became the first high school player taken in the first round since 2005, when the Milwaukee Bucks called his name. An interesting but suiting pick for a team that already had another foreign-born, non-NCAA, almost 7-footer that was young, long, fast, and hardworking in Giannis Antetokounmpo, who was picked three years prior, also at the age of 19. We liked what we saw in Thon as a player, the team's general manager, John Hammond, said after the draft. But the more we got to know him, the more excited we became. He's a very extraordinary person. Maker was excited to start his career in the NBA, and it was fitting that he had to start with a young organization that was eager to get going to being a championship contender. That first year with Thon Maker on the Bucks, they had many young promising players, such as Malcolm Brogdon, Jabari Parker, Chris Middleton, Giannis Antetokounmpo, Greg Monroe, and then some more experienced players such as Michael Beasley, Jason Terry, the Bucks had some really good players, which is probably why they continued to get better each year, as three years after Maker got drafted, they were the top team in the East, and during the latest 2019-2020 season, they faced an early exit, but did have the best record in the league. Rewinding back to Thon Maker's early career in the NBA in 2016, he started out in the Summer League, where he averaged 14.2 points and 9.6 rebounds in five games for the Bucks, and subsequently earned All-NBA Summer League second team honors. Maker played 57 games during his rookie season, starting in 34 of them, averaging just under 10 minutes a game, while averaging four points, two rebounds, and under half an assist, steal, and block per game. In the 2016-2017 playoffs for the Bucks, Maker started in all six games, which was a very good sign for the rookie, and he ended up averaging about six points, three rebounds, two assists, and two blocks. The Bucks were the sixth seed this season and lost in the first round in six games to the Toronto Raptors. Now looking at Thon's rookie season, to be blunt, I wouldn't declare it a success. Thon didn't rank at the top of any stat category or make that big of an impact, but I can cut him some slack for being a 19 year old and making a massive jump from playing against children the previous year to the greatest basketball players in the world the next. No matter the excuses for why Maker didn't perform at a better rate, at the end of the day, if you're a hyped up player and confident enough in yourself to make the leap from high school to the league, you should hopefully be able to back it up. Maybe things would change for Maker in his second season, but it actually went about the same as the first. He only started in 12 games, although playing in 74 throughout the season. He did play a lot more minutes, averaging just under 17 minutes a game, while scoring about 5 points, grabbing about 3 rebounds, and collecting less than an assist, block, and steal per game. During this year, the Bucks ended their season 44-38 and as the seventh seed in the Eastern Conference, barely losing to the Boston Celtics in a close series that went to seven games. In the playoffs, Thon played in six games, starting two, with a similar contribution to his team as he did throughout the season. Recapping the 2017-2018 season, it didn't look like Maker improved very much from the first. Playing about seven more minutes a game is a good sign, but he didn't contribute very much through his stats. Maker was still only 20 years old, on a team trying to navigate their way to being a championship contender, so maybe things were just a little bumpy because of their team dynamic. In Maker's third season during the 2018-2019 year, he sadly was given a reduced role, playing under 12 minutes a game, averaging under 5 points and 3 rebounds. Midway through the season, Maker decided that he wanted to be on a different team, to get a bigger role. Even though the Milwaukee Bucks were on the road to having the best team in the Eastern Conference this season, Maker had bigger plans for himself, with something to prove, as he was an ambitious 21-year-old. Eventually, just before the trade deadline, on February 6, 2019, the Detroit Pistons traded away Stanley Johnson for Thon Maker, another lottery pick that was seen as underdeveloped. Maker was eager to have a bigger role on the Pistons, and although he averaged almost 20 minutes a game once he joined the Pistons, rather than 12 with the Bucks, he didn't see a big increase in his stats, as he still averaged under 6 points, 4 rebounds, and 1 assist. 
Maker was actually performing even worse with the Pistons than with the Bucks, as when looking at his per 36 minute stats, they were worse with the Pistons. Sadly for Maker, the Pistons ended their season by getting swept in the first round to his old squad, the now one seed Milwaukee Bucks. Maker started his fourth season with the Detroit Pistons, and he averaged one more minute this year than he was last, therefore giving him practically the same stats. When trying to determine why Maker hasn't really improved at all since his rookie season, I came across an interesting find. Looking at his game-by-game -game average this season, it looks very strange. He has only missed 6 of the Pistons' 66 games, and he started 14 of them, but his minutes played per game is really out of order. The inconsistency of Maker's playtime may contribute to why there hasn't been much development for him as a player. And yes, I get it. He's a role player, but it's got to be a bit strange for a guy that plays 20 minutes in two games in a row, followed by two games where he gets played about five minutes each. It must also be weird for Maker to play seven games in a row with practically no minutes, and then the following eighth game having your minutes equal the amount of the previous seven. All I'm saying is that inconsistent playing times could possibly prohibit growth. We've seen some glimpses of what he can accomplish, whether it's scoring 19 points and grabbing 7 rebounds in a game, getting 12 points and 12 rebounds, or 10 points and 10 rebounds in games where he's played over 20 minutes. Overall, Maker's played 24 games with less than 10 minutes, 23 games with less than 20 minutes, and 10 games with less than 30 minutes, and one game playing more than 30 minutes. The breakdown for how many minutes he plays a game is pretty strange probably because the Pistons, like the Bucks were for the beginning of Maker's career, are trying to find out who they are as a team, and what they need to make the jump to be a championship contender. Maker's only 23. One of the major problems people believe for Maker is that he really hasn't filled out yet, as it's hard to be a big man in the NBA if you can't hold your own down in the post. Maybe Thon will be one of those guys that is always skinny, but even then, he can still go off and block some shots. Personally, I don't think you can give up on a guy like Maker. If I was the GM, I would see no problem in sticking with a 23-year-old big man that will only cost $2 million a year. Thon's a flexible player to whatever his team asks, and he's got four years of experience already, while still being as young as some rookies. Today's game is filled with tall, lanky guys that can run the floor, and I think Thon Maker is still finding out the type of player he's going to be, 